Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog FarmhouseOnBoon.com and today I want to show you how I make a roast in the Instant Pot. So our family loves to order a grass-fed cow. We get a half cow, which we split usually with my sister and we get grass-fed from a local farm. And so a lot of times grass-fed beef is notoriously dry and not very flavorful. We've adapted to know how to cook it to make that not the case at all. So this beef is 100% grass-fed, so it's not grain finished because a lot of times grass-fed beef is then fattened later on some grain. This is not. And the Instant Pot is the best way to cook it, not only fast, but then also to make it super tender and delicious. So this is about a two and a half pound roast that I'm gonna get going in my Instant Pot. So my first step is to get it hot on the saute function. So I have it going. The reason for this is I'm gonna sear it on both sides to kind of lock in those juices and just make it have that nice browning on the outside, which is delicious for all meats, especially grass fed. And I'm also gonna at the same time sear my veggies. So when I make roast, I like to cook it with onions and carrots, and I like to serve it alongside mashed potatoes. So if you wanna make the job super easy, you could of course just throw the potatoes in with it, but I personally just prefer the taste of mashed potatoes. That way they're not mushy, but they have a nice buttery, salty flavor, just, you know, everybody knows why mashed potatoes are so delicious. So I'm just gonna get two medium onions cut in half because I wanna give them some color in the Instant Pot by sauteing. Okay, if it's hot enough, I wanna hear the butter really sizzle whenever it hits. That's how you know you're gonna get that really good color. This is what I love so much about Instant Pots is you can cook all in one thing. You don't have to go and saute something over on the stove and then bring it over here to slow cook or pressure cook. Instead, you can just switch around the functions and do it all in one thing. Makes it easy. I can keep my stove available for making mashed potatoes and I also have some turkey soup going. Now while those are getting brown, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm just gonna trim the edges off my carrots. Now I washed them, but I did not peel them. It's just my preference. You can of course peel them if you want, but I personally just don't like the extra added step. And I buy organic, so I feel like they are okay to eat. I'm just gonna keep them pretty large. Make sure to cut off any bad spots if you have any on there. I'm just gonna throw them in the nice hot butter and get them browning alongside the onions. Now if there's not enough space for the carrots to make contact with the bottom of the Instant Pot insert here and the butter, then go ahead and just wait and do it in batches because you wanna make sure to get that color. This is the most time consuming part of this. After this little process here, it can just sit and cook and you can get working on your mashed potatoes or other things if you need to do that. About five or six carrots is all I'm gonna do for this. You can see we're starting to get a little bit of color here, but I still like it to have a bit more, so I'm gonna let it go just a bit longer. Then I wanna flip the onions over to get a little color on the other side as well. While that's getting nice and brown, I'm gonna to start to prepare my chuck roast. So I like to rinse my meat, so I'm just gonna open it up and then rinse it with cool water. And of course, I will clean my sink out well later. All right, let's see how we're doing on these onions. Those are looking really, really nice. I'm gonna give that one a flip so we can get the other side. And then as well with the carrots. On the carrots, it won't get as brown, but we're just looking for a little bit of color. All right, after I'm satisfied with the way the onions are browning, I'm just gonna set them aside. And then I'm gonna do the rest of the carrots before adding my meat. Don't be afraid to add a little bit more butter if you need it. We use grass-fed butter from a local Amish community, but if you don't have access to some nice grass-fed butter, you can always use Kerrygold. It's found at most grocery stores. They have it at Aldi for us, Walmart, Kroger, everybody has it. It's grass-fed from Ireland. So if you can't get it locally, go ahead and go that route. All right, while these carrots are cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and salt the meat here. So I'm gonna use about a half, a quarter teaspoon on each side of the meat. I just estimate with this, but 
I like plenty of salt. Everything tastes better with plenty of salt. As well as a touch of garlic powder. Now you guys know my cooking style is very much non-measuring, just it'll taste good no matter what you do. You can see here, we're getting a little bit of color on these carrots. I'm gonna set them aside and get the meat going. Okay. Right, I'm gonna take a peek here. It's nice and hot at this point, so it should be good. Oh yeah. Can you see the color we're developing on that? We're gonna try to get that on all sides before setting this pressure cooker to high and letting it cook. So let's just get that color on all sides. The goal here isn't to cook it, it's just to lock in those juices. All right, now that it's nice and brown, I'm gonna add my veggies back in. I like to keep the onions kind of on top of the meat. Carrots down and around. I'm gonna add about two cups of water. A little bit more salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And it smells delicious already. I'm gonna put my lid on. Don't forget to put the seal back in. I take mine out when I make yogurt. So make sure it's back in or it won't come to pressure. And then set the little knob at the top to sealing, not venting. And then just press the meat or stew button and cook it at high pressure for one hour. Now what I love about a meal like this is you can make it. Let's say that you have a little time slot in your morning from eight to nine or maybe even before you go off to work. You can set this and then it'll go down to the warm function and it'll just keep it nice and warm. You could make it maybe during your kid's afternoon nap to have for dinner. It's one of those things you can kind of set and forget, move on with your day and then dinner will be ready for you. So this is kind of tonight what I'm doing because it is the afternoon now. We have somewhere we have to be at four and we're not gonna be home till we're already super hungry. So while this is cooking, I'm gonna get my mashed potatoes going. I can leave them on the back of the stove in some simmering water and we come home, I'll just drain them, mash them and we'll be ready for a nice dinner without having to cook right when I get home. Be sure to visit the blog post to grab the printable recipe for this as well as I have the Instant Pot that I have linked, because a lot of people ask me about which one I have and recommend the size, all that kind of stuff. The link to that blog post will be in the description below. All right, well thank you so much for watching this video. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living in a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse. Mm -hmm.